stocks are on the upswing. We're seeing a rebound for the first time in four sessions. Let's talk with Art Hogan. He's the chief market strategist at National Securities. So, Art, let me just jump right in because just as we were getting ready to sit down to talk, the CDC came out, revised guidelines in terms of mask wearing for people who are vaccinated. So vaccinated people no longer have to wear masks indoor or outdoor. What, how good is that for the recovery? I, I think it's really important for the recovery, and it's a psychological step to getting back to normal. I think that's one of the things people are looking at is saying, we're really getting closer, and I think that's important. I think another thing is this colonial pipeline got reopened, so perhaps we won't be seeing those lines around the block to get gasoline in parts of the East Coast here. That, another good thing. But I think the most important thing in terms of today's rally really coalesces around the fact that we've been lower, not just for three or four days, but for the good part of two weeks. And a lot of that has been concerns over inflation. But those concerns tend to get exaggerated and certainly the moves in markets get stretched. So I think we really got to a point, especially in the NASDAQ, where we're oversold. And what, what's been happening, which is really important, is everything's been for sale. So technology companies that have great earnings and are not adversely affected by inflation are being sold just like companies that don't have earnings yet and won't for a few years and should be selling off in this inflationary climate. So you brought up inflation. We got the PPI data today uh, showing the biggest year-over-year -year rise since the, the uh, series was changed in uh, November, I believe, 2010. Yesterday we got the CPI data showing the biggest year-over-year uh, -year rise uh, in, in 12 years. So is it time for investors, especially these new investors, these Robin Hood people, is it time for people to start um, inflation-proofing their uh, investments? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think one way you inflation proof is know what you own. So what doesn't do well in an inflationary environment uh, typically is companies that have very rapid revenue growth, but don't have earnings until way out in the future, 23, 24, 25. And if that's the case, what we have to do to, to ascribe a value to that company is to take a multiple. And the, more, the higher inflation, the higher interest rates go, the the bigger that multiple is, so the contraction in multiples come down. So where last year you might be willing to pay 30 times revenues for a company when we're below 1% on the U.S. 10-year, this year if we end the year up 2% on the U.S. 10-year, you're likely only willing to pay about 15 times sales for that same company. So you want to know what you own. But if you own companies that aren't adversely affected by uh, inflation, that don't have a lot of input costs, think about some of the big uh, technology names that have a price to earnings multiple, then I think that's a better place to be. But what a really good idea would be in this inflationary environment is to have some balance, have some growth on one side, stocks and, 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 and technology that have a PE multiple, and have some economically sensitive cyclicals on the other. Think about financials. They do well in a rising interest rate environment, industrials, materials, and then rebalance that every two months. Keep that barbell level, and I think you'll be able to do better than the S&P 500 this year but you, you want to stick to your plan. So thinking of that idea of rebalancing, uh, does that mean that investors should be thinking about scaling back on some of those, especially since, uh, 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 let me say, rebalancing, pulling back on some of those stocks like the Zooms and the Pelotons and those, especially because every time we hear the word inflation and we hear rates going up, then we see the adverse reaction in those kind of tech names. Yeah, you really do. And what that rebalancing really means is says you've got equal exposure, but you want to make sure your exposure is companies that aren't adversely affected by inflation, right? It's those companies that actually have earnings in the here and now, and you can actually measure what multiple they're trading at. And a lot of those names have come off with the rest of technology. But when you rebalance, what happens is, let's say right now cyclicality has been doing better than growth, and it has been, and you rebalance every two months. What you're going to be doing at the end of this month is likely selling some of your cyclicals and buying some of the underperforming tech. So you're actually buying, you're selling high and, and buying low. You do that every two months. If you did that for the last 12 months, you would have outperformed the S&P 500 by almost 500 basis points. So I think you want to continue to do that because it won't be a binary year. It's not as though it's only going to be growth or only going to be value. So if you keep that balanced portfolio in check, you rebalance every couple of months, but make sure you know what your exposure is. You want to make sure you have companies that have actual earnings that are measured and not just uh, uh, EV to EBITDA or a, or a multiple of their sales. Now, I know some people might 
look at the market and say, wait a minute, the PPI number was so strong. Why is the market up? Yesterday, the CPI number was strong and the market was down. We also got the jobless claims data, right? So tell me how important were those numbers in soothing concerns that was sparked last week when we got that jobs report? Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. Just last Friday, we got a jobs report that was a major disappointment. And people that were concerned about inflation said, OK, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Look at this jobs report. Lo and behold, we get the CPI and it was much higher than anticipated. The same thing is true with the PPI. What's really important is not to look at that year over year number. So there's a very low base, a base effect. The numbers last year in, in March, April and May just fell off a cliff. So those year over year comparisons are gonna look gargantuan. You're gonna have a 4% core CPI number, which we haven't seen in 50 years. So clearly you wanna ignore that, but pay close attention to how this is, how inflation is moving sequentially, right? And that month over month, and the actually the PPI came in less hot on a month over month basis than the CPI did. There was a reverse last month. So we're actually seeing that's that calm down a bit. We hope that a lot of those things that are inflated right now are going to find a supply response. So what's expensive right now? Travel, renting a car, buying a used car, hotel rooms, airlines, all of those things likely find more supply as we get into the summer and into the fall. Those markets are very tight right now. We didn't produce enough of those in the, during the pandemic. We're producing, we're, we're trying to get all of that reopened and manufacturing up and going. So that supply response likely will make these inflationary numbers start to roll over towards the end of the year and into next. All right, great. That's Art Hogan. He is the Chief Market Strategist at National Securities. I'm Conway G. Gittins, and this is Reuters.